Good afternoon. We're going to begin our lesson, New Testament Lesson 52, uh, the book of Acts. Satan attacks the church from the inside. Uh, this is going to be a terrible situation for the church. They've been getting attacks from the outside. You can see your enemy. But now the enemy is going to be in their midst. <clears throat> and this is what I'll be talking about today. Let's pray before we get into this. We love you, Lord. We praise you. You're a mighty God. We thank you for all and everything you are doing for us, Lord. Health, healing, miracles, signs, wonders. Uh, we're short of nothing, Lord, because our belief is in you. We thank you for all and everything you've done. Bless this Bible study. Bless our hearts, our mind. Help us to see what you want us to see. Help me to teach what you want me to teach. In your name, amen. So we're going to get into this lesson. This is one of the many lessons I say, please share these lessons with other people. People have got to hear this because it can make a tremendous difference in their life, the way they live. Let's go into it. Um, I'm the first of a little review from last lesson. And we talked about uh, the torch of persecution in Jerusalem spreads the burning torch of the gospel. And the gospel went from... Uh, Samaria, Caesarea, Antioch, they were first called Christians, to the other most parts of the earth. We've got to remember that at first the persecution was the Jews uh, fighting the Jewish Christians. But later it became the Roman Empire was fighting the Jews and the Jewish Christians. So we look now, and it's the bottom area here, it says, in Rome, believers... Uh, meet severe persecution. And it kept getting worse and worse and worse. So this is persecution has become a, a thing that they see the enemy coming, they try to avoid the Romans. You see the people uh, right here, it says persecution in Jerusalem caused the church to be moved to Antioch, Syria. Antioch, Syria is getting close to the east and a lot of the Jews went east a lot of them ended up back in Babylon at this time. They were trying to escape the persecution from the Roman Empire that was on this side. Actually, if you're looking at a map, Rome would be here and, and Babylon would be here. But nevertheless, uh, they were getting as far from Rome as they could. Uh, we mentioned last week the book of Acts, very important chapters. I tell my Bible study people, remember 2, 8, 10, and 19. These are scriptures where you can actually see what the apostles did with all the information Jesus had given them. And you see how they related to people, telling them, you've got to repent. You've got to be baptized in Jesus' name. You've got to receive the Holy Ghost. And there'll be evidence you've received the Holy Ghost by <clears throat> speaking in tongues. So uh, 2 Corinthians 13, 1 said, This is the third time I'm coming to you in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Shall every word be established? And we see that there are two people here, Peter and Paul. Uh, Peter's one witness, Paul's the second witness. In fact, the whole book of Acts is basically about Peter and Paul. But they're the two witnesses. Uh, they got together in Galatia and they discussed, uh, let's, let's take a look at what we're telling people. Uh, let's make sure we're on the same page. And when they completed that, Paul wrote the book of Galatians, starting off with the we are angel from heaven. Preach any other word unto you than that which we have preached. Let them uh, be, uh, excuse me, I need to actually look at the scripture here because I'm thinking there's something else here that should be said. Um, Galatians. As, as we said before, so say I now again. Uh, go to verse 8, Galatians 1, 8. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. The gospel, any other gospel, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, that if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached, let him be accursed. And he says, if we are an angel, why, why is an angel being brought up? Well, Gabriel came to uh, Mohammed, and um, 
Moroni, the angel Moroni, came to Joseph Smith. That's a Mormon religion. So angels came to them, but they're preaching different gospels. And according to what's being said here, let them be accursed. That's strong language. And we've got to be so careful that we stick with the Word of God. With that, uh, let's get into this persecution, the days of vengeance. Destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD. It took three years to finally defeat the Jews. And it was the final stand was at Masada. They were led away captive into all nations. The Jews were led away. They were removed from Israel, uh, Jerusalem, and all the area around there until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled, which is a 2,000 year period that we're living in right now. If this was a, we don't know the exact time or date that Jesus is going to return with the rapture, but we're not ignorant of some things because we know that it'll be 2,000 years from the day of Pentecost. And that is approximately 30 AD, but with the mess up in the calendars, there could be a four year difference in that. So. Uh, what would that be, 2030? Well, we're getting mighty close. And is there a seven-year tribulation before or after? Uh, uh, we're going to find out very quickly. But all the signs, everything. We're in a place right now where people say good is bad and bad is good. Uh, there's so much confusion. They're so far from God. They're, they're starting to persecute Christians. And this is just the beginning. But this, God said... This is going to happen. Prophets from old, again and again and again, spoke about the fact that this is going to happen. And of course, army, uh, the Roman armies besieged, excuse me, the Roman armies besieged Jerusalem. The church in persecution, uh, looking to the left, it says persecution spreads the gospel. So really what the devil thought he would do to wipe out the church actually spread the church. Persecution by Nero, A.D. 64. Nero was crazy, and he, it was a severe persecution, and uh, many stories are told about him. He had beautiful gardens, but he liked to put tar paper on Christians and light them, and he loved to just ride through his gardens and hear these Christians screaming. It was just so warped, so... But this is the kind of persecution that these Christians were, were taking. Uh, they were undertaking, I should say. And think about that. If someone believes in something enough that they'll die for it, that's a strong belief. It's not just a mental thing. It's, uh, they have loved him with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. Excuse me, I'm having trouble with my... Mouse here. Okay. Uh, next one is Colosseum was built by Vespasian for 100,000 spectators. Uh, Emperor Titus killed thousands of Christians. Think about that 100,000. It's like a football arena, uh, maybe a small one these days, but 100,000 spectators. They were watching the Christians uh, being killed. And they were fed to lions. I, I've heard of the fact that they would place bets on people and wh whichever Christian would be the last one to die, they win these bets. And it was gruesome, but this is heartless people. I guess they just have, they grew cold over time, but uh, that can happen to us. We can let our conscience be seared and we can so see something that's evil or terrible now, but uh, over time just... It's nothing anymore. We've got to be so careful with all God has given us in the area of truth. The Catacombs of Rome, A.D. Uh, 257. This about uh, second, uh, going on third century uh, after Jesus had left. And we're looking at the catacombs. Severe persecution was going on, and they hid down in the catacombs. I was able to go to some of the catacombs in Rome, and uh, you, you, you could easily get lost. They're just tunnel after tunnel after tunnel that you can go through, and you can see where 
they, they have found some places where Christians were and there was little symbols on the wall and on, on, on the uh, places for burial that uh, you could tell that it was a Christian there. So again, uh, things are getting severe for the Christians. Then Diocletian burns Bibles. Now, this is starting to get very bad when the Bible is taken away from people. Uh, this is our hope. This is, this is the only thing that's solid, the only thing that uh, can bring us through anything, and that's taken away. Uh, some of them had to learn to just pray like they've never prayed and fast, and that was the only connect at that point. They weren't, didn't have his word, and of course, it was so important for them to connect with other Jewish Christians and later uh, Gentile Christians so that they could share what God had given them concerning the Bible. Now, <clears throat> this is kind of like a big picture, and I'm, I'm using the scripture down here, though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, and then that's which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And we have to think about, look at how many different churches are out there. There's actually something like 40,000 plus Christian religious denominations. And of course, you, you have to think about this too, like in the Baptist church, I've read a, it was Christianity Today, it was back in the 80s, but they said within the Baptist church, there was actually 98 different churches within the Baptist denomination. That was back in the 80s. Things, things have got a lot more changed since then and things have got worse as far as numbers go and people's beliefs. So where did all these religions come from? We're, we're going to look at this. That In the beginning, it started at Pentecost. And Pentecost was when everybody in the upper room, 120 people, received the Holy Ghost spoken tongues. Then all the people in Rome saw what was going on, and, and uh, Peter, they were laughing at people that had received the Holy Ghost, I guess, and, uh, or making fun of them, and Peter got up and says, these, not, these people are not drunken as they suppose, but, uh, for this is the third hour of the day, but this is that which is spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, say, God, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. So we see here that... Uh, this was the beginning of the church. This was the day of Pentecost. And uh, from there, the truth was established. The whole book of Acts shows you what they believed. You can go down, you can see the doctrines that were taught. And we've got to stick with those doctrines. And we can see the gospel that was preached. And we've got to stick with that gospel, no other gospel. But after the book of Acts, we start seeing other gospels come in, other beliefs coming in. And uh, the devil is wanting to trip us up. He wants to get us believing in things that are not uh, basically God's word. Constantine embraces Christianity. This is the worst thing that could have ever happened to the church. Who is Constantine? He is the emperor of Rome. Was he a good guy? No. Uh, he was in a war. There was... Uh, four generals, and and there was two against two, and they were looking like they were in a mess. And in his kingdom, you had all these uh, Christian churches that th they were really concerned about them, that not sticking with Rome, causing trouble, the, the confusion within Constantine's Roman uh, Empire at that time. And so what he did is... is uh, he stopped the persecution of Christians. And that was in 312 AD. It was, at, uh, uh, it was called the Edict of Milan. And everybody's saying, hey, they're not persecuting us anymore. We can walk out on the streets. And he had his, uh, everyone in his uh, Roman Empire, whatever office they held, he had every one of them to be baptized in the Church of Rome. The Church of Rome is where uh, there was many, many, many who had been baptized in Jesus' name. They received the Holy Ghost, spoken tongues. And so uh, this, he had 
his entire Roman pagan army baptized. And now, there was a, some, a lot of false doctrines out there at this time. One of them was this idea of a trinity, a baptism, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, which was incorrect. But uh, uh, from people studying this era, they can see that a lot of people may have been using that baptism. But once he uh, established the Church of Rome to be at the basis for all the other churches of his empire, uh, he, he, he said, this is what we're going to believe in. And actually, they have what was called the Council of Nicaea in the year 325 A.D. Actually, there was a <coughs> confusion at that time with a person by the name of Anastasius and uh, <coughs> Arius. Anastasius was a student of Tertullian who was pushing forth this idea of a trinity. And... When you look at the definition of Trinity, it is three divine persons in one God. Persons? Uh, the Holy Ghost is a person. The Father, which is a spirit, is a person. And of course, we know Jesus is a person. But they were saying this Trinity consists of three divine persons. Now, you've got to know where Constantine and where all these uh, so-called prophets and, and ones that were leading this kingdom they were pagans. They believed in paganism. They didn't want one person. They wanted three. They wanted ten. They wanted fifty. Actually, you can see that uh, the Church of Rome ended up worshiping multiple, multiple uh, different gods, small g. And, of course, the Church of Rome became the Catholic Church. So we look here that the do Trinity doctrine was introduced and established at the Council of Nicaea in 325 A.D. Okay, we've got something that is introduced to the whole Roman Empire. In every case, we see where when people start going away from God, there's always a remnant. There's always a group that will stay with the truth. And even at this time, there was a remnant. There was a group within the group, a small group in comparison, but uh, they stayed with the truth of baptism in Jesus' name, receiving the Holy Ghost. But when this doctrine came in in 325 A.D., it said everything uh, backwards. And you saw the church falling into the dark ages. Let's take a look at the next scripture here. Baptism changed to Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Prior to that time, no one was baptized using titles, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. But at 325 A.D., this became the norm. Infant baptism and sprinkling. Uh, infant baptism, at baptism is not in the Bible. The Bible says we are baptized out of obedience to the gospel. But the problem is, how can a baby be obedient? They don't know any better. And sprinkling. Uh, baptism comes from a word that means baptizo, to immerse, to dip to plunge. The sprinkling, pouring comes from an, another word, rantizo. So when people are uh, bapt, now quote unquote, baptized in the Catholic churches and the many churches that have broke away from the Catholic church, you're still using that baptism, still uh, doing infant baptism and sprinkling. Uh, they're not baptizing them at all. They're rant tizo them, uh, rent tizoing them. And again, false doctrine had been introduced to the church. Then we see there was a great falling away. There's many scriptures there that talk about this falling away, and I'm going to get a little bit deeper into that. But the thing is that this is all prophesied back in the Old Testament. The church would get started. It would be strong, powerful, mighty, but then there would be a great falling away. And then we'll see that the Dark Ages starting. As they fell away, if they picked up one pagan doctrine after the other and made this part of the Church of Rome, uh, they were in the Dark Ages. <clears throat> and let me say this too. The, uh, the Church of Rome became the Catholic Church. I was born and raised in the Catholic Church. And in the Catholic Church... 
Uh, of course, I, got, I had catechism. I, later, I was actually uh, went to Catholic schools and high school. And uh, I'm very familiar. I was actually going to become a priest myself. Uh, they try to push young men to become priests. And they try to get one out of every family. I was the oldest son, and I was the most likely. And, and I myself wanted to get so close to God. I had a desire to be close to Him. And I felt that I could do it if I became a priest. And in time, though, God gave me a vision one day as I was walking to uh, church in the summertime. And He told me, you're not going to be a priest in, in the Catholic Church. And he also told me that I was going to be married. Of course, priests aren't married. And, and he told me that these two things. So uh, I knew what I wasn't going to do, but I didn't know what I was going to do because he didn't give me anything else. He just told me, uh, I'm not going to do that. And so I've had experience in the Catholic Church. I was very strong in the Catholic Church. I wanted to be a priest. God told me no. But as I went through the Catholic Church, I, like many people around me, started questioning doctrines that they had. And uh, in our catechism, they told us, if anybody ever speaks against our church, you have nothing to do with them. Well, uh, I did that for many, many years. But over time, I started to see that uh, we didn't really have any answers to give some of these questions that were being asked. And it bothered me greatly. So... Uh, not knowing what to do, what, what I did do is I got into evolution. I thought if I could figure out where man came from, I could figure out where he was going. And I found out that didn't work either. Evolution doesn't work. <laughs> I had one of my greatest teachers I had, Dr. Chabillian, uh, at the University of Iowa, tell me one day, he says, uh, Roger, and he kind of grabbed me and he says, evolution is just a theory. I said, no, t to myself. I said, no, it's... It's got to work. It's, it's got to be real. And I studied and studied. And one night I just got so frustrated, I threw the book down and I did something different. I knelt down before God. I'd got so far from him, but someone told me the most beautiful thing you can tell him is, I love you, I love you. So I started, I love you, I love you. God came in on me and such a beautiful feeling. I remember I was even, I was crying like a baby. And after a while, he spoke to me and he says, You've tried every other book. Now, why don't you try the Bible? So I begin a new path, and, and I got much more to story about. I'm not going to get into that, but uh, God was showing me that uh, He not only did not want me to be a Catholic priest, but He did not want me even in the Catholic Church. And in time, I found out that a lot of its doctrines came out of the mystery Babylon religion. And uh, there is uh, bell worship throughout the Old Testament. A lot of the Catholic Church were part of this bell worship. They had idols. They had uh, special places of worship. And, and I'm going to get into some of that later. But right now, we're seeing that due to the fact that they, uh, Constantine presided over this council at Nicaea, he decided that uh, we... Or the Church of Rome uh, would start believing in a trinity. Remember, he was a pagan. He preferred three gods over one god. Uh, that's their thinking. But it plunged the world into the Dark Ages. Let's go on. Uh, decline in Christendom. Notice AD 30. Uh, Paul wrote to the Thessalonians that Christ would not return to earth except there came a falling away first before the man of sin would be revealed, the Antichrist. So there had to be a falling away, and we're going to look at this falling away. A.D. 30, uh, 1 to 50, day of Pentecost, A.D. 30. Uh, the 54 to 56, persecution by Nero. This was uh, martyrdom of apostles, proof of their belief. If anybody died, it just was a proof. Notice all the apostles except John died, but that's a strong proof that they believed that Jesus was real. Uh, Jerusalem was destroyed, AD 70. Persecution by Domitian, uh, 81, 86. 
false doctrines begin. Gentile pagan leaders coming into Christian churches, bringing with them pagan ideas and opinions to change doctrines. The church began its fall in the second century from 100 to 199. This is where Tertullian and some others started bringing in these false doctrines and uh, people were accepting them left and right. Let's look at 150 to 300. Uh, whoops. Gnosticism uh, had a unique, mysterious knowledge. Uh, Gnostics, uh, Kabbalists, there's all kinds that are mixed in this. Most of them came from Alexandria, Egypt, and a lot of the Greek philosophers went down there. Uh, uh, I'm not going to be able to get in much more, but I do want to say that the Gnostics believed that they had superior knowledge to everybody else. This is out of Alexandria, Egypt. This is where every version of the Bible came from. And they said that when God gave Moses the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai, he only gave them half of it. The rest was buried in the earth. And they, the Gnostics, were the ones that were able to get that, retrieve that, so that they had this mystery religion knowledge that nobody else had. <clears throat> they, they were given special insights into God, which is totally erroneous. Uh, next, we had the Ebonites. They went back to the Jewish worship. The monotonous, they had a misuse of gifts, especially prophecy, and uh, they had an idea that they became gods. The Greek apologist philosophy, there were three schools of thought. One was Asia Minor, the other was North Africa, and the other was Alexandria, Egypt, which did a lot, which did a lot of damage. Origin, uh, 185, 254, uh, everyone saved universalism. He spread that doctrine uh, throughout uh, the known world at that time. And then there was a man by the name of Savalis, A.D. 200. He believed in one God. He believed in the truth. Many followed his teaching. They were called civilians, and, but they were also called heretics. So we see here some people coming along, some false doctrine, but there's always this remnant. We're going to get back into this next week, and uh, I thank you, Lord, for being this right now to open this up to everybody. Uh, it's history but we need to know the history. We, we need to know that we are in the right church, a church that's following your word and help me in the next couple of weeks to show everybody what you want me them to see. In your name, Jesus, amen.